If you've watched any of our previous videos, you know that I'm a fan of genre films. But one of the genres that maybe we don't talk about as much are one of my favorites, and that is foreign films. I'm a big fan of French and Italian films. Today we're going to talk about one of the French films, The Umbrellas of Cherbourg by Jacques Demy. Stay tuned. Jacques Demy was part of the French New Wave that ran from the end of the 50s into the 60s. And it was avant-garde filmmakers who had rejected the traditional trappings of French cinema, costume dramas, and classic filmmaking techniques, and embraced the aesthetic of uh, many American filmmakers like uh, John Ford, and especially Alfred Hitchcock. And in doing so, they created a whole new movement that was called the New Wave. Amongst the most famous practitioners of that were uh, Francois Truffaut, Jean-Luc Godard. They're probably the two most famous, but there were also a couple of guys on the edges that were interesting. One of them was Claude Lelouch. If you haven't seen A Man and a Woman, you really should. And the other was Jacques Demy. Jacques Demy was married to a very famous female uh, film director, Agnes Varda, who was quite different in her approach to filmmaking than her husband's. His first film was called Lola, which was supposedly available as a Criterion edition, uh, but doesn't seem to be in print anymore, which I would really like to see because it looks really interesting. But the one he's most famous for is the Umbrellas of Cherbourg. And this is a very simple story, a very simple love story. Now let's talk about the movie first, then we'll talk about the packaging, the disc, and we'll talk about how it all looks and how it all fits together. So let's talk about the movie. The Umbrellas of Cherbourg is a really simple love story. It's kind of a poignant love story of a young girl whose mother owns a shop that sells umbrellas in, wow, who would have thought of it, the village of Cherbourg in France. She's in love with a young man named Guy, or as they would say in French, Guy, who's a mechanic who works in a garage. She's young, he's young. They're both very attractive, especially since the actress is Catherine Deneuve. If you've seen my uh, blog post about the uh, April Fools and Catherine Deneuve, I'll put a link below for you to take a look at that. This is a very young Catherine Deneuve, and this is the movie that really made her a star. So they're in love. But at the same time, against the very, in the background, uh, there is a war in Algiers, which really is what amounted to uh, France's version of what happened here in the U.S. with Vietnam. At some point, the lovers who were want to get married have this interrupted by the fact that he gets his draft call and is sent off to war in a particularly touching scene when they're at the train station. And what happens is shortly thereafter, they find out that she's pregnant. So this is like 1957. The movie is set in 1957 and it goes on in time. Although the film was released around 1963 when the Algerian war was over. But it was still fresh in the memory of the French public. So there is a dilemma, of course. There's, there's the late 50s. There's a pregnant girl. Her, her lover, her husband-to-be, is off to war, maybe never to return. Her mother is very distraught about the whole thing. And there's a young man, handsome young man, by the way, uh, who's very interested uh, in marriage. He wants to marry her, and he's a rich diamond merchant. So it's a nice matchup for the two, especially in the mother's eyes. The, the, the Catherine Deneuve character, not so much. So when we move to uh, act, act Three, when he comes home from the war, he's distressed to find that in the interim, his love of his life 
has married this guy and moved to Paris. And he goes through the period of depression, he's sad, and along the way, there's been this little backstory, and that is he lives with his aunt who's very ill, and her caretaker is a woman named uh, Madeline. And she's a very lovely young woman. So after hitting the bottom of the barrel, being drunk and disorderly, his, well, what happens is his aunt dies. Madeline decides to take off, and he realizes, wow, maybe she's the girl for me. And unfortunately, um, she said, I don't want anything to do with you. You're a drunken bum. Oh, what it all boils down to is that uh, she winds up, Madeline winds up with Guy. They open up their own garage. And at the end of the film, who stops by for gas but Catherine Deneuve and her little girl, who's turns out in real life was uh, Agnes Varda's... Um, daughter. And uh, he's there with his son, portrayed by Michelle Legrand. More about him in a minute. Uh, his, uh, as his son. It's pointed, it's moving, and boom, the movie ends. Now, Jacques Demy has said that he wanted to make people cry, and that was his intention of the way his film was made. And I gotta tell you, I, get, I can get emotional about uh, films, and this is a sweet, lovely film with intense art direction, with colors. We'll talk more about the transfer in a few minutes. It's, it's a beautiful film to look at. It's a beautifully acted, sensitive, sweet, sad story. And it was quite moving, to, but I found at the end, I was smiling. I was really happy for the both people that they had moved on in their lives and, and found some semblance of happiness, even if it wasn't with each other. Now, okay, did I mention the punchline? There's no dialogue in this movie. Every line is sung. Every line is a bit of a song. And it's all created by the very famous Michelle Legrand. Michelle Legrand received his first Oscar nomination for the score for this movie. And he had 13 Oscar nominations over his career, including three Oscars for songs and scores that he created. So if you know anything about Michelle Legrand, you know he writes sweet, really terrifically melodic and dramatic. Those are my favorite two hot buttons in movie soundtracks. So everyone sings. The mailman comes in to bring the mail to the umbrella shop, and he sings a little bitty to the people in the shop and drops off the mail. When, when Guy is drunk as a bum and in a, in a bar and getting ready to be tossed out, he's singing to the, to the bartender who's yelling at him in song. I understand the more recent film, Les Mis, is also that way. It was created totally as, a, as an opera. Legrand calls the Umbrella of Cherbourg a jazz opera. And the score has a certain pop jazz feel to the music, but always very compelling. Much as in uh, the Burt Bacharach music used in uh, The April Fools in my review, which you can't hear the song, but if you look up The April Fools on YouTube and listen to Dionne Warwick sing it, It'll move you, much like the music that is in The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Terrific movie if you are a fan of romantic films or if you're a romantic person. You and your loved one will love to watch this together. Criterion used to be the class act. Now they're kind of like, you know, they do this and they do that. So inside we have the disc and we have a little booklet. And you know... There was a time when these kind of booklets were pretty nice. And, and this one isn't really that bad. But, but people like Imprint and Arrow, and they've raised the standard. You know, Criterion hasn't, hasn't caught on to that yet. And it used to be, I, I used to hold Criterion in high regard as the quality class act. 
in the uh, the space of making DVDs and Blu-rays. But in recent years, they've been kind of wishy-washy on the quality, and it kind of comes and goes. However, the transfer on this is first class. It is beautiful. It's lush. It's um, quite quite spectacular, if I may say so, uh, to look at. It, you look at it, especially since the art direction in this movie is pretty spectacular. Uh, if there's a wall in the background, it's not a gray wall or a moss green wall. It's a bright green textured wall. As in the, in the umbrella shop, when uh, the, the mother and the young girl move from room to room, not only do the room colors and the wallpapers, very spectacular wallpapers, not only do they have v vivid colors, but the clothing that both of these women are wearing match and complement the wallpaper. And this is beautifully realized in the uh, transfer. This is a beautiful transfer. So what does it all boil down to? I mean, French films uh, always had a certain panache, a style that you don't find in, in many American films. American films were always beautifully made, and even today, even the sleaziest, cheapo, direct-to-video movie looks fabulous. The cinematography and the lighting is always great. But here the lighting is on the flat side, and the focus is on the music, the colors, and the dynamicism of what's going on on screen. As I said at the beginning, if you're romantic, and I must confess I'm a little bit that way, and if you would like to watch a film with your significant other, the person you love, this is a great movie night for both of you. So I can't recommend The Umbrellas of Cherbourg more. It's just a great movie, a great video, and well worth a purchase. And especially now, as by hopefully I'll get this up on YouTube before uh, the Criterion sale is finished, which is 50% off at Barnes & Noble if you didn't already know that. So if you get a chance, that makes this Blu-ray quite a good deal. And I'll, I'll confess that every, every Criterion edition that I own was bought at the Criterion sale. And what I'm most excited about is I wasn't really familiar with the work of Jacques Demy, but he also did his follow-up film to this that he says in the extras, and let me say a few words about the extras. A lot of times, extras on a movie are um, just like somebody just sprinkled a salt shaker and just whatever crap they had laying around, they'll stick on there as an extra. All the extras on this, including a wonderful documentary uh, of, of the making of the film, uh, are on here. And it's really, I watched every one. It's terrific. There's no commentary. Now, let me digress a few moments on the subject of com commentaries. I don't like to watch a movie with a commentary. I find I want to watch them. Well, if I start watching a movie and the guy said, well, we shot this one, and then the guy had the light on the side, and then, and then Harry walked in and told me this, who cares? All I know is when I start watching the movie, I just get caught up in the movie. I don't really like commentaries. But there was an interesting interview with a film critic that's as good as a commentary. And he talks about some ins and outs of the film and stuff like that. It is absolutely great. I'd much rather have someone talking about the film while well, we drop a few clips and stuff in there than, than watch a commentary and get distracted. But I will tell you this, as I was watching this critic talk about the film, they would drop these little clips in. And one of the clips is, was when the two lovers are at the train station and he's ready to go off to war. And I could just feel it inside of me. I could feel like, oh, oh, there's something like, am I going to cry? And this was just during the interview with this guy. It, there's a, it's a quite moving part of the film that even after I just watched the film, it got to me. So anyway, the extras are superb. There's uh, some audio interviews that are, I usually don't like audio interviews because I really want to see the people when they're speaking. But there's one with Catherine Deneuve that is just spectacular. You really want to listen to that because she was very young when she made this film. And she went on to make 
50 other movies. Now, she will say, I only made 40 because she just felt like she wasn't the star on 10 of them. So they, she didn't feel like they counted. But that's still a lot of movies. And her presence in all these movies make them special, even as a young woman in this film. So, yes, if you love romantic films, if you love French films, you need to own a copy of The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. So what's next? The film that Demi did after this, he said he wanted people to come, if he wanted people to cry in the first movie, in The Umbrellas of Cherbourg, he wanted people to come out of his next movie dancing in the street. And so what we have is a film called The Young Girls of Rochefort. Now this is also a musical in bright colors and it stars Catherine Deneuve and her sister, uh, who is somewhat older than her, but I don't think very much. And I don't know if they play sisters. I really don't know what the movie's about because if you look at the trailer, and I recommend you take a look, I maybe I'll put a link below to the, for the trailer for the young girls of Rochefort. And I'm looking at the trailer, I'm thinking, well, that guy looks like George Karras from West Side Story. And wait a minute, that French guy there, he's singing and dancing. He looks like Gene Kelly. Well, heck, it is George Karras. It is Gene Kelly. It looks like a lot of fun. It looks like a French take on a Hollywood musical. I'm going to run down to uh, Barnes & Noble sometime between now and, and Black Friday and try to pick up a copy. And if so, it will be maybe not the next movie we take a look at, but certainly upcoming. So thanks for watching. And if you get a chance, I would really would appreciate it if you would, you know, click that subscribe thing and, you know, maybe give me a like or two. It helps the algorithm and maybe YouTube will let more people know about this little channel that I have here. And I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you again real soon.